All Star Live. Well, all week we have been honoring and saluting military All Stars, the men and women of the National Guard in Minnesota and around our state that do so much for so many of us. Uh, recently, we uh, took a trip to Sauk Center in West Central Minnesota to meet two brothers who became brothers in arms in Afghanistan. Casey Ilias and his younger brother, Brett, have been actively on the move from the time they were born. They were both very adventuresome boys, you know, on the go 90 miles an hour all day long, from skateboarding to inline skates to jumping their bikes over things. You know, they were just off to the next adventure and everything they did. I always had to keep an eye on them because they were so creative in their adventures. We live in upstate New York and they got very much into snowboarding. And when we moved from New York to Wisconsin, not so many snowboarding hills where we live. So they took out the four-wheeler and the ski rope <laughs> and started towing each other around the yard, jumping the septic mound. And those are the kind of adventures they would just fill their time with. They weren't big sit-in-the-house TV watchers. They were always hard to work. In 2006, the Ilias family moved to Sock Center. Soon after, Casey, a first-year college student, enlisted in the National Guard, joining the 849th Mobility Augmentation Company based in Litchfield. At the time, the war in Iraq dominated the daily news. As long as I was a full-time student, I was non-deployable for two years. And right after I got back from basic training, um, my unit actually did deploy to Iraq. I had an E-7 come up to me and basically told me that it's not if you deploy, it's when. The thing that made it not quite so scary when Casey enlisted is that he kind of went in under a GI Bill where as long as he was going to school, he wouldn't be deployed until, you know, so much time had passed. And so I felt like we made it under the radar there. Brett, I had the recruiter at my kitchen table on Brett's 17th birthday, and he was signing up, and there was no talking him out of it. Brett Ilias was motivated to serve his country by both the actions of his big brother and by the terrorist attack on 9-11 when he was still in elementary school. At the time, I didn't, I didn't fully understand it. I was, you know, I just, my teachers were crying, and there was a lot of, a lot of chaos, and I didn't fully understand it. And then as I got older, I, I realized what it really meant and wanted to do what I can to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Both of the Ilias brothers became combat engineers, soldiers who are responsible for mobility and counter-mobility operations with explosives and mine detection a part of their expertise. And they each became an army sapper after completing a physically demanding course with an emphasis on leadership skills. Infantry has rangers, combat engineers have sappers. So they teach you how to lead troops and how to run missions. Sapper is more advanced, you know, a combat engineer and then the varsity squad of combat engineers. Brett Ilias was the first of the two brothers to put his training to use in a combat zone. He was working in the oil fields in Williston in 2012 when he transferred to a North Dakota unit that was deployed to Afghanistan. While he was in country, panic set in during a phone call to the family home in Sauk Center. I got on the phone and it, it started like any other conversation. Hey, Mom, he greeted me and very upbeat. You know, hey, how's everything going? I miss you. And then all of a sudden... We started taking small arms fire. And to me, it sounded like it was very close. And then in a very rushed, hey, Mom, I got to go. I'll call you back. <laughs> Click. I was horrified. Brett returned safely in the spring of 2013, home with his family and the woman who would become his fiance, Debbie Hansen. But three months later, his old unit, the 849th Mac, was deployed to Afghanistan. This time, his brother was going, and with the memory of two fallen soldiers during his first deployment, he volunteered for a second tour of duty. It's not a fun place to go to, but you make the best of it. And when we took two casualties on my first tour, that kind of set it in stone. Um, I'm going to do everything I can and, and make sure I come back here with my brother. So I didn't want to be at home if something would happen while those guys were gone. I wanted to be there with them. 
There was a lot of sleepless nights, um, constantly worrying and wondering um, what's going on and where they're at. Every time you heard any kind of a report of an attack or uh, of a soldier being injured, you're always wondering, you know, where was that and is that where my sons were? The Ilias brothers both operated Huskies, one-person vehicles at the head of a convoy equipped with highly sophisticated bomb-detecting radar and designed to ensure route safety for military personnel and the civilian population. On January 20th of this year, their base in Kandahar province fell under attack. We're in our tents and a uh, V-bit hit our base, which is a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device. Knocked pretty much everything in the tent down, everyone else on the ground, and another vehicle rolled up and they shot a RPG, which is a rocket-propelled grenade, over the wall and that impacted right next to me. I was in a brief at the time. They came over and, and said we have casualties and, and they kind of listed off who, who was hit and I heard my brother's name. He basically said, you know, hey, I'm all right and everything's all right, I'm good. Don't worry about me. Medevaced to a hospital, Casey took shrapnel in his back, hip, and both legs. Given the option to return to the United States, he chose to recover in Afghanistan and returned to active duty three months later. I'd like to stay. I got my brother here, and I was a team leader and a squad leader um, um, during the deployment. So I got all my guys I felt you know responsible for, and I didn't want to leave them. When the 849th MAC came home this spring, the unit first went through a demobilization process at Fort Bliss, Texas. Once Casey was medically cleared, he was released earlier than the others and rode with the Patriot Guard, escorting the troops to their homecoming in Litchfield. As we got closer and closer to Litchfield, where you know the families of the soldiers, you know, were, they're in those communities. I mean, it was. Um, and I was like really moving, just seeing everyone like, you know, welcome home signs and everything else. And you know, it was just a great feeling, you know. Just, I kept thinking, I wish I was on that bus. You know, I left with these guys. I wish I was coming home with them. And, you know, in a sense, I was coming home with them, um, you know, being part of the Patriot Guard and escorting them back. But, I don't know, I got emotional and I started tearing up as I'm riding by. And it's like, wish I was on the bus. <laughs> Casey and Brett Ilias have re-enlisted in the National Guard and will continue to serve their country. And while they'll modestly tell you they were just doing their jobs, these blood brothers and brothers in arms are all-star soldiers and American heroes. Very proud of them. Both of them, you know, have served the country very well and, and uh, just exceptional individuals. I know Brett basically did the last two years over in Afghanistan. He had a three-month stay in between the times. But then he wanted to go back when his brother got deployed. So it's just very honorable in, in everything in, in, that they do and in, in the spirits that they have. We often think of the Minnesota National Guard strictly in terms of military operations. But during crisis situations in our state, they do so much more. The Minnesota National Guard and the entire National Guard as a whole is basically a cost-effective operational force for the state and the nation. We have three basic missions. One is our federal mission, basically to fight and win America's wars. We have a state mission for domestic operations, any emergency in Minnesota. And then we have a community mission, too, just to add value to our communities. We're often thought of as a, as a response force of first choice. However, not, we're not first responders. Um, you know, we do come alongside the community uh, to, to help them in their effort. Um, and we are not to compete with um, resources in the community or resources within the state uh, that, that could handle that, that emergency. It's the organization of the military, our ability to plan and organize and communicate. I mean, think of a volunteer pool of 100 people and then a group of 100 soldiers and what we could do with just one person to contact. So that lieutenant, for instance, in charge of a group, we're just more capable in terms of organizing and responding in a very efficient and very organized manner. So it makes us very effective on the ground. We are honored to be joined by Brigadier General Neil Lloydolt with us now. Neil, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Great to have you with us. Help us understand a few things. First of all, what is an Army division? You're involved with the 34th, the Red Bull. Uh, just, just to clear things up in terms of numbers. 
A division is the largest element of the Army's tactical warfighting capability, and so the numbers range, but they're in about the 14,000 range, and in Minnesota there are 10,000 soldiers in the 34th Infantry Division. Let's talk about the challenges you face dealing with the men and women that you deal with on a, uh, a daily basis, and I know that there are so many of them. Uh, this is quite a job. It is. It's, it's a good job, though. It's a real honor. You know, you get to meet folks like the Brothers Ilias that we just talked about. I met a young soldier who's here today to participate in the festivities, and while there are a lot of challenges, I, I think it's, it's the opportunity that comes from being able to deal with, live with, work with, and help soldiers that I have as the division commander. And I just wanted to say a uh, big thanks to you and to Fox for the all-star salute and this series and for you taking the time and being willing to get to learn about and meet soldiers personally. Oh, it is our pleasure, believe me. And I, I know I speak for everyone that, that has been watching. There is a, a great sense of gratitude that we have for you and for everyone that uh, serves our country and, uh, and serves us. So we, we send it right back to you. There's great history in the Red Bull, 70 years ago, part of the liberation uh, of Italy, and then that history is kind of reconnecting. It, it really is. I mean, it, the division to serve the most consecutive days in combat in World War II, and a, and a subordinate unit of that organization, the 1st Brigade, serving the most consecutive days of combat in, uh, in Iraq as well. What kind of role does the division have when it comes to state emergencies? As we talked about, uh, obviously there, there's some tremendous things that are going on overseas, but when there is a crisis in Minnesota, you're there. We are, and the division headquarters provides the command and control, the, the staff organization and planning, and the day-to-day -day oversight of the soldiers and airmen who may be responding to a crisis on the ground at the, in the Red River or after a tornado. You've had many deployments overseas. Uh, uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about what you've been involved in and what you see in terms of future deployments. You know, I think my greatest pleasure so far has been to be the chief of staff of this great division when it was in Basra, Iraq in 2009 and 10. But as we draw down, as we exit uh, two wars and we have to return to a peacetime training environment, we participate in things like war fighting exercises, which we just did in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. And the division was fortunate enough to be part of the largest war fighter in the Army to date, over 2,500 soldiers, 10 brigades across seven states, all to Fort Leavenworth to participate in this exercise. Brigadier General Neil Lloydo. We appreciate what he has done. We appreciate you coming by. And thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to uh, talk to you and everyone that serves uh, all Minnesotans in the military as we have continued all week long to salute those people. And it's not just during All-Star Week. It's every day of the week, I think, for many of us. Thank you, sir, again.